How would you shoot street photography without showing anyone's face? Well, that's the challenge of today. If you're new here, I'm Lazar and on this channel, I share behind the scenes of my photo sessions to help you in your own photographic journey. So if that sounds good, stick around, it's gonna be fun. In an era where ethics and privacy are more important than ever, I think we should have a talk about how we document public life. How can we capture everyday moments without compromising personal privacy? In France, a jurisprudence has stated that freedom of expression prevails uh, above image rights and in, pu in public space, of course. But the world has changed and an image can now be photoshopped and uh, used in uh, adult sites. It can be used for cyberbullying. And with AI, we don't even know or have a sense of what uh, the future can uh, become now. You can make a picture talk and uh, you can use uh, this for a mischievous um, ends. And is it even a subject in Paris where 80 million people visit every year uh, with uh, their cameras and uh, their phones, uh, shooting in high res and uh, 4K? So, and I'm not even talking about surveillance cameras in Paris. Let's take the example of war photography. So bear with me, it's gonna be uh, interesting i hope in the vietnam war some pictures they changed the opinion and uh, governments realized how powerful images uh, were and since then um, photographers they, they can't now go to conflict zone freely as freely as before what happened is that a lot of photographers turned into another kind of documentary a documentary that spans over years. People like uh, Sebastião Salgado with uh, Exodus uh, that took uh, six years of producing and uh, Lee Sarfati in uh, Russia that took I think seven years. So why am I pointing this example? I think that maybe in street photography and documentary photography because uh, Gary Winogrand uh, used to say that uh, um, the term street photography was a bit uh, misused and uh, if he takes photograph photographs of uh, animals he wouldn't be called a zoo photographer so uh, I think for him it was more documentary photography you're documenting street life and uh, so is there a way to document street, street life with privacy in mind? So let's try to do just that. Let's hit the street and see if we can come up with pictures with no face in them. As usual, when I go out with a challenge or a theme or an assignment, I keep in mind that it's a guideline and uh, not a strict rule. Let's see. So I'm going to use this uh, element and um, I set my aperture to 2.5 so it gets a blurry. I use the frame within a frame, but uh, this time I will use one frame to block uh, the face, uh, basically. So let's try here. I think it looks good. We don't see a single face, yet the picture is okay. I think it's a good start, good warming up. So let's move on to the next. I know this spot has great leading lines, so I'm gonna cross the street and maybe take a shot of a cityscape. So I'm gonna turn to the other side of the uh, Rivoli Street, which is a, a street that is now just for uh, bikes, no cars, except on the right one, the right lane, just for uh, cabs, emergency vehicles, stuff like that. Here I have the feeling that uh, the Louvre is closed, so I don't see many people inside. I see some people are just uh, waiting outside. I'm going to use this uh, barrier nonetheless. I'm going to use the fact that the subjects are so far away that uh, we cannot distinguish them. The warm light complements the uh, bluish autofocus uh, barrier. And uh, yeah, we can see the details of the highlights over there with the two silhouettes. I think it works. Here I'm torn. It's a great picture of uh, those kids with their nanny in just in front of the Rivoli Street and the uh, Rivoli Museum. So I'm gonna take the shot, but you know, I don't uh, like to show uh, pictures of kids. But the thing is that uh, I'm recording this with my Osmo Action 5 Pro at 4K 50 frames per second. So basically we have already eight megapixel pictures 50 of them in three seconds, uh, you have 150 pictures. So what's the difference, okay? Is it okay to 
uh, film but not take pictures anyway so i continue i see this lady with uh, sunglasses so i think it's pretty good uh, incognito mode also there are three subjects and two are facing the other way and just this lady facing towards us on this picture we see the men's profile so do profile count as uh, shooting someone's face i don't know you tell me I don't find a lot of uh, elements to shoot frame within a frame, but I see mainly just bikes. So I'm going to use this one and try to use uh, this uh, young lady as a subject. I try to pay attention to the edges more than usual, and this is the result. I notice those ladies from afar, so I decide to wait a little and see. I find it interesting to have the uh, light source in the image. So I'm just waiting and trying to have those two ladies uh, just with uh, detaching from the background. We see the glow from the uh, promise filter. I like the reflection and the fact that uh, the other lady has uh, uh, one eye covered by the black uh, bar. Still on the uh, Rivoli street and I see uh, the, the bikes over there and I decide to use this uh, element to try to, to hide uh, the faces. So I'm uh, just uh, setting my shot and uh, trying to pay attention to the edges again. This entrance is not very well known, so I decide to use again the barrier and see if I can uh, come up with uh, something with the uh, silhouettes over there. So I think it works, sort of. And I decide to wait and see if I can frame this uh, gentleman but without the face again. So I wait a little. I noticed the guys on the left and uh, the two women uh, sitting and I thought that would be it would be a nice composition. So first I had it in uh, black and white in my head. So I just take the shot, trying to have it clean. Clean shot, military uh, vocabulary. So it's a fashion week in Paris. So that's why this area is closed. I think there, there's a fashion show. Uh, a friend of mine, photographer, told me that it was a uh, Balenciaga. Um, so yeah, so I just take a, a shot and uh, continue on my way because I'm not really interested by the fashion industry. To be accurate, I like how people are dressed in the streets and uh, I even have a, a video upcoming with uh, street fashion or um, shooting strangers, having portraits in the street. But the whole uh, fashion world, I'm not really uh, into it. And it's pretty uh, interesting because I started with uh, shooting models and uh, working with uh, model agencies. I still do from time to time, and uh, but I consider them more like portraits than uh, fashion photography. And the, the two photographers that I uh, like the most in the fashion uh, industry are the uh, now past uh, Peter Lindbergh and uh, Paolo Roversi. And those two, they both considered their work as portraits and not fashion. So it's pretty interesting to to have uh, this uh, distinction. Back to the topic. So I see this uh, woman over there waiting clients with her rickshaw. I decided to use those uh, red lights and see what I can uh, come up with. So here it's funny because there is something going on with the statue and the lady, I don't know. This uh, red handle is a good opportunity to test the uh, macro capabilities of the lens and uh, the subject just uh, put himself in front of me. So good, I check the shot and this is it. I think it has a pretty nice uh, blurry background. I'm at 2.5, yeah, I think it's pretty nice. Again, a colored element just in front of the faces and I think uh, this color just pops um, pretty nicely. So this is not a fashion show, but a lot of people are here in front of the University of Medicine in Paris. So I'm going to try to take a few shots. This picture is totally off topic, but I like the way the man is positioning himself. Again, bikes as a foreground, blurry foreground. 2.5 as usual and then I find this uh, orange flag so I decide to use it and try to see how I can position it uh, maybe in front of the face of the man but we see the face of the young lady let's try a second attempt yeah I think it works better let me show you the length of the line let's go 
it's going on and on and on. And at the end, I will just uh, tell you what it was. Excusez-moi, c'est pourquoi la queue là C'est pour la remise du diplôme pour les médecins. Ah, j'ai été sûr. Félicitations. And now we are in the fancy area, so a lot of people, and it's going to be extra hard to find the subject, frame it, and uh, isolate uh, the subject, and try not to show the faces. So I'm just looking for something, and uh, I don't thrive in chaos, so very hard to focus. And I see this lady. And I just had to take uh, the portrait. I know it's not on the topic, but I mean, come on, she's uh, just a. Uh, I mean, her face, the expression, and the red hair, you know, uh, under this light, I had to take it. I need to get back on track. So I, I use this uh, green bag as a subject. The foreground is the red light and the lady in the background. And this is it. Another shot with a color in the foreground and uh, the subject in the background and this one with uh, the lady over there with the blurry uh, thing across her face. I noticed the man over there, the chauffeur, so everything screams luxury. The chauffeur with the Mercedes, his outfit, the lady in the background with the dog and her uh, sunglasses. Here we have a cute street. I like it a lot because it reminds me of the southern part of France. I edited this picture so it will have uh, this uh, Mediterranean vibe. I see this scene and there's a picture that comes right away in my mind and that's the one from uh, Henri Cartier-Bresson again. Of course we don't see the tension as in uh, Cartier-Bresson's uh, picture but uh, you know he, sometimes when you... Oh I see the girl over there. I didn't notice that... Uh, yeah that's one again. I was saying that uh, when you uh, go and see exhibitions and uh, you buy books, you know, your mind, your subconscious mind gets those images and when you go out to shoot, you know, it just uh, pops out uh, right, you know, in the front seat of your mind and uh, then you feel inclined to uh, take the same pictures. So this is it. Here I'm trying to use the backlight. I think it's going to be a good option to uh, block the faces of people. So I'm gonna try to use this element and see what I can come up with. There are a lot of people here, so I have to wait until the, there will be only two or three. One other option to not show the faces is to blend them in so many faces that, you, that, that the face is not the subject anymore. The crowd becomes a subject. It reminds me a quote not uh, related to photography per se and it says that uh, dictatorships they burn the books but democracies they drown the books just food for thought i'm gonna keep on using the backlight again i think it works pretty well and a high angle shot Always a good uh, idea when you don't want to see people's faces. I have the idea of using this uh, uh, glass panel, you know, with the dots. I'm going to put them out of focus and I think with the backlight it will definitely blur the faces but uh, organically. So like here, like the lady here. So yeah, I think uh, you can see the people but you cannot really tell uh, who they really are.